Hello everyone, and welcome to part 7 of our Hackalade tutorial. In this part, we're going to be talking about uh, how you can add relationships to your data models. We've covered a lot already, but now we're going to be tackling into something that um, people may know from their previous experience with modeling tools, because, you know, obviously in uh, ER diagrams, entity relationship diagrams, uh, we're used to having these types of um, uh, relationships, foreign key relationship lines between the entities, right? Because usually they re represent some kind of a constraint on an attribute that is part of a table. Right. This is a normal thing for us. Uh, ER diagrams would contain relationship lines, obviously. This is much less uh, obvious for non-relational databases or documents or schemas or you know uh, files that we are that we are dealing with in our modeling environment, because you know there really isn't necessarily something that would enforce these relationships. If you're treating two different files who obviously have a relationship between them, but that doesn't mean that they are going to be enforced, right? So, uh, having said that, the approach that Hackolate has taken to this problem is that we do still want to add these types of relationships in our documentation, in our models, in spite of the fact that there's no enforcement, because it makes the model so much easier to understand, document, and maintain, right? That's obvious in our opinion, right? You want to document these types of links between what could be physically disconnected entities, right, in your data model, so to represent that they are, in fact, linked to each other. Right, so in uh, Hackolate, in the Hackolate Studio, you will be able to create foreign key relationships, right, which we know, but we're also going to allow you to create a different type of relationship, which we call a foreign master relationship. Why? Because in a denormalized NoSQL environment, it's very common for information to be repeated, to be stored twice, right, and you want to be able to see where that information is coming from, not just the keys, Right? but also the masters of a particular piece of information that is being duplicated. Right? So we are introducing a second type of um, uh, relationships in our modeling environment. When you create a relationship uh, in Hackolate Studio, you will find that they appear at the data model level, so at the very highest level of your modeling environment. This is because there are uh, targets out there, physical targets out there, that allow you to create relationships between physically separate um, uh, uh, databases and data models, right? You can basically cut across these types of models. Now, uh, when we talk about how you would go about these, uh, creating these relationships, well, there's so many different ways, and, ev and everyone will have their particular preference, right? And I'll show you a couple of them uh, in a little demo a little bit, in a little bit. You can drag and drop, you know, in the entity relationship diagram from the child to the parent attribute of uh, compatible data types, right? So you, the child will then be dropped onto the parent attribute. Um, you can also go to menu, actions, and then add a relationship. You can use the toolbar. You can right-click and then add a relationship in the context menu of the object browser. Or you can um, um, go to the relationship properties pane and press the plus sign there. Uh, there's lots of different ways, as you can tell, and it will be up to you to judge what, which one is most appropriate for you, which one you like best. Another important point, obviously, is that you can adjust the style of the relationship, right? So styling is obviously an important piece of a graphical tool set. Uh, you will find that uh, it's very easy to adjust things like thickness and color of every single uh, relationship line. But also, and this is a quite a recent feature for Hackolade, you can position the relationship. You can draw, you can drag and drop it somewhere and it will basically be drawn in a different way from a different point to a different point uh, so that you can uh, customize the layout of your graphics. And finally, I also want to add that um, the relationship um, capability also applies to what we call uh, compound keys. So keys that, um, that relate to multiple attributes on each side of the relationship. Um, but of course, you will still need to be able to uh, make sure that these data types are compatible and that you can link them from one to the other. Great. With that, I am going to first now show you a couple of things and then we'll uh, wrap up this little tutorial here. So what we have here is a very simple data model, uh, a container with two uh, little entities in here, orders and products. Products can appear on orders, as you can see, right? And so there's multiple products that can be on one order, obviously. So my preferred way of creating a relationship between these two entities is by dragging and dropping from the uh, child over here to the parent, right? So I'm just going to create it like that. And then I'm going to say, okay, the parent field, there's one product that can be uh, zero to 
end times on the um, on the child on the order, right? Um, now what we have here is a foreign key relationship, as you can tell over here, right? Um, and I can uh, also adjust the positioning of these um, relationships, right? So I can drag and drop this like this, right? So make it a little bit um, more visual. But as you can tell, there's m uh, other really interesting um, uh, relationships here that should be documented, like for example the skew number. Right, and that is then not a foreign key, but a foreign master relationship. Right, remember a foreign master relationship is a relationship between two entities that is there only for documentation purposes. I'm going to indicate the cardinality and make the adjustment uh, in terms of the positioning here as well. Right, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the description. I'll do the same thing for the unit price. Right, so uh, then I need to obviously adjust that and say, okay, this is not a foreign key; it's a foreign master. Uh, let's uh, move this thing around, right? So here we go, and here we go. Uh, this thing as well is not a foreign key, it's a foreign master, right? And I will indicate the right cardinality here as well and drag it around as well, right? So uh, just so that it appears a little bit more visually. Right. So you can do this in multiple different ways, right? I've just dra dragged and dropped this um, from one entity to the other entity. You can do the same thing by looking at the actions here and adding a relationship there, or you can click on the container and add the relationship that way. Um, all of this leads to the same result. Um, um, with that, um, we've already shown you a big part of how you create relationships in your ER diagrams. Uh, obviously, you can name these relationships, uh, right? You can give them a more uh, uh, understandable business name here. Um, and you can also look at their details, you know, uh, in uh, in uh, in the right pane over there. Uh, now, the last thing I'd like to show you in this little demo is that you can also create what we call composite key keys and composite relationships, right? So here you have the possibility to create um, composite keys, right? So if I would say, you know, these two things would want would need to become composite keys, well then I can do that by clicking on the entity, going to the composite key tab, and then saying, okay, this thing uh, has more than one uh, uh, key for its uniqueness constraints or its primary key capabilities. Uh, you can uh, choose it that way. Great, I've um, wrapped up the demonstration of this uh, uh, part seven of our Hackulate tutorial. I hope this was useful for you and then you can also uh, let us know if you have any additional questions. Uh, thank you for listening and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.